We already have some videos here on the channel about the Swedish Gripen fighter, showing some of its capabilities and performance in war exercises. This detailed exposition inevitably ends up leading to comparisons with other fighters, such as the French Rafale, another European Delta Canard. To clarify the differences and advantages of each one, we will make a comparison between the two. We will evaluate Gripen E and Rafale in three different categories, which are situational awareness, payload, and self-protection capability. No will evaluate range and performance of flight, as they are significantly affected by factors such as external load and flight profile, as well as other variables that are difficult to measure fairly. At the end of each category we will display a comparative table between two points evaluated, and at the end of the video a general table. Before you start, just don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Situational Awareness a fighter's situational awareness is its ability to know and understand what is happening around it through information collected by its organic sensors. In this case, the main sensor is the radar. Gripen E features the Raven ES05 active electronically scanned radar, which is the latest in radar technology. This radar has around a thousand transmitter receiver modules remembering that the more modules the radar has, the better its overall performance. Gripen E's Raven ES-05 radar was mounted on a rotating platform that allows coverage of up to 100 degrees to each side in the frontal arc. Its official range, as with virtually all radars is classified. Another important sensor for the Gripen E is the infrared tracking system. This system, called Skyward G, detects targets through their heat emissions and in a completely passive way, that is, without emitting any detectable signal that could alert the enemy. Its range is also classified, but according to the manufacturer it can detect subsonic targets head-on at a distance compatible with the use of BVR missiles, a very useful capability in environments with strong electronic interference or against targets with low radar signature. Gripen E's ability to generate situational awareness is complemented by the ESM system. This system is made up of five radar warning antennas, four of which are at the ends of the wing rails, and one below the fuselage, close to the front landing gear, the latter specifically to detect ultra-low band emissions. These systems work by detecting, classifying and tracking enemy radars based on their emissions with great precision, with a coverage range that goes from 0.5 to 40 gigahertz, that is, from UHF band radars to KA band radars. The Rafale F-4's radar is the RBE-2, also with active electronic scanning, the latest technology for military radars. This radar has 838 transmitter-receiver modules, and is mounted in the traditional fixed way, which guarantees a coverage angle of approximately 60 degrees for each side in the frontal arc. Its maximum range is also classified. Originally the Rafale also had an infrared tracking sensor, but due to operational and low performance problems it was removed. Currently, the Rafale only has a sensor equipped with a TV channel for visual target identification. The difference between the infrared tracking system and the TV channel is that the infrared tracking system presents targets on the screen as if it were a radar, in addition to being able to form images for visual identification. The TV channel only forms an image, like a large long-range camera, being, in general terms, much more limited than modern infrared tracking sensors. The space for the Rafale's old infrared tracking system was maintained, and there is an expectation to equip it again with a system like this in the future, but for now it does not yet have this type of equipment. Still as a passive means that contributes to the formation of the Rafale situational awareness, is its ESM set, made up of four radar warning receiving antennas, located on the edges of the air intakes and on top of the vertical stabilizer. This system detects, classifies and tracks emissions from enemy radars with great precision, covering a frequency range between 2 and 40 gigahertz, that is, from S-band radars to KA-band radars. Within the situational awareness category, the advantage lies with Gripen E. 
It has a radar with more transmitter modules, which suggests superior performance, and its antenna repositioning system allows for much greater angular coverage. This means the Gripen E can see a much wider area in front of it compared to the Rafale. The Gripen E's infrared tracking sensor, which Rafale currently does not have, also contributes to Gripen's greater situational awareness, especially in situations of strong electronic interference, where the use of radar can be committed. Finally, the Gripen E has a more comprehensive ESM system, capable of detecting a wider range of radar frequencies than the Rafale, such as UHF band and L band radars. Payload In terms of payload, that is, the ability to carry weapons and fuel, the Rafale is a pretty tough competitor. The Rafale C can carry 4.7 tons of internal fuel and up to 9.5 tons of external cargo, including weapons and additional fuel, simultaneously. It has 14 hardpoints for attaching weapons and external tanks. The Gripen E can transport 3.4 tons of internal fuel and up to 5.1 tons of external cargo, including weapons and additional fuel, simultaneously. It can increase its external load to up to 7 tons, as long as it reduces the internal fuel in the same proportion so as not to exceed the maximum takeoff weight. The Gripen E has 10 hardpoints for attaching weapons and external tanks. Both Rafale and Gripen can be refueled in flight. Analyzing the payload category, the advantage undoubtedly belongs to Rafale. Being a larger and heavier fighter allows it to have more weapon attachment points, more internal space for fuel, and the two engines generate enough power to carry more weight. Obviously, two engines also consume more and have a higher operating cost than just one. It would be inaccurate to quote range ranges, since, as stated at the beginning of the video, these values depend on factors such as external load, total weight, drag and flight profile, but it is possible to safely say that the Rafale could carry the same loads of weapons of the Gripen E and there would still be hardpoints and power available to carry more external tanks than the Swedish fighter, which results in a range advantage for the Rafale. Although configuring combat aircraft with the maximum weapons load is somewhat unusual due to the impacts this brings on maneuverability and radar signature, the advantage that the Rafale F-4 would have over the Gripen E in missions that require large payloads and ranges is clear, like an attack in deep territory. Self-protection Self-protection consists of the ability to survive cycles of enemy engagement. One of the Gripen E's main systems for this role are the electronic jammers, which serve to interfere, deceive through the generation of false targets or simply block an enemy radar. It has six antennas for this function. Four of them, located on the wingtip rails, are responsible for interference in mid-band radars, such as engagement radars, while the remaining two, located on top of the vertical stabilizer, are responsible for interference in low-band radars, such as acquisition radars. This system ensures high-power, wide-band spherical interference capability. A very big difference is that this Gripen E system uses gallium nitride semiconductor technology, which allows for transmission power several times greater compared to traditional systems of similar size. Another very important system in the Gripen self protection is the missile approach warning system. It consists of six heat detection sensors spread across the fuselage covering all possible approach angles. These systems detect the thermal signature of missiles launched against the Gripen, indicating to the pilot which evasive maneuvers to take and automatically releasing disposable countermeasures. Expendable countermeasures are the last layer of defense against a hostile missile. The Gripen E carries a large number of traditional countermeasures, but it also carries intelligent countermeasures, such as the Bright Cloud, a disposable decoy that detects emissions from enemy missile radars and emits signals that create false targets, luring the missile away. These smart baits are much more effective than traditional decoys. The Rafale only has three antennas interferers, located at the base of the canards and vertical stabilizer. As with the Gripen E, these antennas have the function of interfering, deceiving through the generation of false targets or blocking an enemy radar, 
with coverage also spherical, that is, in all directions. These jammers still use the older gallium arsenide technology. Missile approach warning on the Rafale is provided by two spherical sensors located on the sides of the vertical stabilizer, ensuring almost total coverage. Just like in the Gripen, they alert the pilot of the approach of an enemy missile, indicating which evasive maneuvers to take and automatically releasing disposable countermeasures. The expendable countermeasures carried by the Rafale, however, are only of the traditional chaff and flare models, without smart decoys. The Rafale also has another sensor, which does not exist on the Gripen E, which is the laser warning system, made up of three detectors capable of alerting the pilot if a laser is aimed at the Rafale. Laser systems are generally used to measure distances from optronic systems, or to guide short-range missiles such as the Swedish RBS-70 and the British Starstreak. In terms of self-protection, the advantage is again that of Gripen E. Although it does not have a laser warning system like the Rafale, the Gripen has twice as many radar interference antennas, which cover a greater bandwidth and generate certainly greater power through the use of gallium nitride technology. This gives the Gripen E a greater probability of being able to deny the enemy's use of radar, thus avoiding possible engagement. If a radar-guided missile is launched anyway, the Gripen E still has the advantage of being able to use smart disposable baits, which are more effective than the traditional straw baits used by the Rafale. Therefore, in our comparison, the Gripen E would have an advantage over the Rafale in situational awareness and self-protection capacity, which theoretically would make the Gripen the most suitable option for cases where the threat level is more sophisticated, such as aerial combat missions in highly contested environments. The Rafale would win in payload, which would make it a more suitable option for close air support and deep ground attack missions, where its greater weapons transport capacity and greater autonomy would guarantee it an advantage. And do you agree or disagree with the result of our evaluation? Leave your opinion here in the comments. Thank you for watching the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and see you next time.